Yes. Okay. <laughs> you see that the, where the way we think we become. Why should I think bad about you? Why should I think? Uh, why should I get anxiety with you? For example, I'm just citing an example. Why should I get into anxiety with anyone and everyone in the world? Why shouldn't I move with the peace and calm? So that affects my attitude. That affects me. That changes. So master, our master says that we should change our attitude. An attitude, attitudinal change can come by thinking. And thinking with these principles. Thinking with the feeling and emotions. Any form of anxiety, jealousy, or hatred enters from the back door of our mind. We don't invite them. But for peace and calmness, it is a matter of a choice. If, we, if I don't think, it will never come. Not only I think, but I need to understand, and then I need to practice until I get rid of those negativity. Attitudinal change. I'm not saying that you are full of negativity. Don't feel that way. But we all have, everyone has certain ideas, opinions coming from the past, memories. So those thought creates the reaction and triggers. Everyone has. Why everyone has it? So our modern life, we have been missing this idea, this, these, this practice, what we have done. Modern life is guided by the frustration either, or by the ego, by the lack of humility. Modern life is guided by a sense of dissatisfaction. Modern life is guided by hesitation, Oh, small things, we get hesitated. Don't do this, Isabella. Why are you doing this? Come on, you love Isabella. She's your daughter. You have other ways of also speaking. I have, oh, I overheard one day. <laughs> do, do you see that? You have to, we have to understand, we have to change this thought pattern, agitated in the wandering mind, untouched by the inner calmness in the space. We feel as if we are untouched by, we feel as if Isabella is responsible for my crying and hesitation. No, she is not. We did the same thing when we were of his, her age. Her energy has to be given a different direction. So what is understanding? Our master says that we lack a kind of humility as a, which is contributes to my frustration, to my anxiety, to my speaking uh, with the reaction. Why it happens? It happens because this mind is constantly looking inside at the limited level. This mind has become very much limited. It lives in its own cocoon. That is what we say, the self-centered. Without considering others' needs. For example, there is Isabella. I see that Isabella has a lot of energy, and that is why she uses her energy in a different activities. And there comes the mom, and who presses. And then you get also frustrated and you are dissatisfied. So it results into a conflict inside you, inside her or inside the other daughter. So at present your, your daughters may not, uh, may not express because they don't know what is dissatisfaction. They don't know how you have treated them. But as they will, they will grow up, 
they will create a particular habit of reacting to you. So the entire goal of the Eastern wisdom is to change myself. I have to change. I change, I bring about a change in my mind, a sense of humility and looking beyond my self-centeredness, the life changes. I, you have to think about it when you listen to it. So you have to think, what is the other way? What are the two more options I should talk, communicate, behave, express? First to my daughters and then to Eric and then to my near and dear ones and then to my friends and relations. I can bet you, if you bring, if you think about it for about a week and you find out that, oh, there needs a change and you change, everyone is going to appreciate you more. But in the beginning, we have to start dissatisfaction you just an example a kind of dissatisfaction and hesitation it is because of the wandering mind so the dissatisfaction hesitation mind wandering mind is also associated with the modern life the pace of the technology information it leaves us overstimulated. You are cooking something and you have a buzz on the phone. Now you want to check who has sent you the message. At the same time, you are cooking something. So it's an overstimulation. It is a distraction. We don't, we don't see that as a distraction. We don't tell the mind, calm down. Let me cook this first. After that, when my hands are free, I'm relaxed, I will check the message. No, 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 I have to check the message just now. This is uh, idea of overstimulation in the mind. There's a constant trigger in the mind. So it seems there is no problem in the beginning, but gradually as we, be it becomes a habit. And that habit causes, that habit is expressed as a form of anxiety or anger or reaction against people outside you. We are intelligent and wise. That's why I'm talking uh, on, the, on these principles to you. Running after petty desires. Another, you know, that is also the modern sickness. When women told me that, you know, that, you know, I ordered 10 things from Amazon. When they came, I received it, I opened them. My mind says you don't need any one of them. And I'm damn frustrated by this kind of online shopping. I do it every day. I spend a lot of money. And I see that they are not at all for use to me. We are not responsible. <clears throat> Why? Because we are running after petty desires and habit. It is easy today to get caught up chasing superficial things in our life. And that causes the sense that keeps the body in the, into, into anxiety. Our body always remains anxious. So then what happens, you're talking to someone, your expression from, through the body also causes a lot of challenges. We need to cultivate inner calmness and peace. It is very important. It is not that, you know, I, I talk to you in calmness because I can control my inner hesitation and I can talk to you with calm. But this is a hypocrisy. Inner, I'm boiling inside and I'm talking to you in calmness outside. That causes too much harm. I have seen for the last, in the last 40 years, it has resulted into many severe physical illnesses to the people. 
which they don't realize. Then they, they say, no, I have been, no, I have been living my life with a moderation and how come I have this cancer and how come I have those challenges? I have this disease. But when I look back into their entire history of the life, I see them, these elements are still there. A sense of anxiety, running after the petty desires, a sense of overstimulation, triggering, almost body is triggered without any reason, a sense of the habit. My friend, you need to think that, do I want to live in peace and happiness tomorrow, day after tomorrow? What I have done in the past is done. tomorrow, day after tomorrow, in the future, and in the current life. The way I talk and communicate and feel and act and think towards my daughters, same way my daughters will become tomorrow. Sometime I start teaching something beyond one's expectations. Because I want to go, I want to help you to go deeper into your life and find out that what exactly is the purpose of my life. Why I'm living. That's why you said I'm still alive. <laughs> so that I'm still alive, it came from many factors buried inside your mind. if you dig inside, deep inside. So what exactly is the answer to what we discussed just now? So first is the recognition of our modern, you know, the frustration in the modern life is fueled by a sense of the ego, by the lack of humility, by a constant dissatisfaction and distraction. Whether you say, you, you pick up any word, whether it's a constant distraction, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a dissatisfaction, a sense of dissatisfaction is always there inside your head. Whether you say it or not, it is there. <laughs> okay, my, uh, I don't want to do this, but you know, but if Eric does not understand, then I have to follow the same what Eric says. Now, there is a sense of dissatisfaction. <laughs> no, he doesn't tell me, but I can understand. <laughs> so, you know, that sense of dissatisfaction should go. You are living with someone very near to you. And still I have a sense of dissatisfaction with a small and petty desire. Hmm. That will cause a lot of challenges. Who knows in the future what will happen? I want to avoid unfortunates in the future. It happens through the mind. Think of it, my friend. So whether I say it, it has to do with dissatisfaction, distraction, or a lack of humility, if you add all the three together, the small disturbances in my mind, it is a lack, it is fueled by the ego and the lack of humility. Let me follow you the way you say. What is the problem? Why? Because I care you, because I love you. If you have that kind of a thought, it changes you and it changes the relationship. No, it doesn't mean that you don't have a right to say anything. You have a right. But we have a ways of saying it. Unless we change that attitude, it will not happen. We spend much time chasing small and petty things. Well, you said this and I said this. We need to forget this. We need to dissolve this. You said this and I said this. No. Why? It comes from the same kind of dissatisfaction and trigger in the past impressions of the lack of humility. We should have this. And that is why we have a mantra. Sarve bhavantu sukhinam. Let everyone be happy. 
So how he can be happy? Oh, he has his own understanding and he says to do something and you do that thing without harming yourself. Where is the problem? Let me do it. So it is not going down or going up. It is changing the mind from the dis distraction, dissatisfaction, entering into the state of the humility. And when we enter into the state of the humility, it brings the inner calmness. It brings the inner calmness. So you create a space inside your mind for stillness so that you can direct your mind to more deeper state of the calmness. And that is why we did the practice today. If you do it regularly, so what happens? So that practice is known as, uh, in Eastern wisdom, it is known as the Mangala Charan. A Sanskrit name, Mangala Charan. Mangala, Mangal means auspiciousness. And Acharan, there are two syllables. So the second syllable means behavior and attitude. So I always love to move into the into the attitude of auspiciousness. Isabella, you are crying loudly. Now you see you are so soft. You're crying. You're crying loudly. You know, now I have made it a, my promise to myself that if you cry loudly, my ears do not listen to you. I'm giving an example. It will take maybe a couple of repetitions and then Isabella will come to you, will talk to you softly. Now I'm talking softly. Do you listen to me? And yes, I listen to you. So not only you have changed your habit, but you have also changed the habit of You need to understand. So that Mangala Charan introduces my ego and the selfishness. That is when the practice. So that this is one way to do it. What the second benefit? You cultivate humility and reverence. Gradually you are practicing with your daughters. Ultimately you will start practicing with Eric. You will start practicing with the near and the dear ones and your friends and relations and the life is going to change. You feel the people who hate you will start loving you. It is because of my attitude, inner calmness. We think that I have done good to you, but my internal conflict is still present. And that reflects on in the other's mind. I need to bring about that change. Cultivates the humility and the reverence. It institutes, you know, this mantra that we have done, it instills the gratitude and the contentment. Thank God I have been blessed with the two daughters. So let me help them evolve. I am blessed with Eric. I'm blessed with the near and the dear ones. Let me follow the path of inner humility and the calmness. Let me promise to myself that I will always express myself in inner calmness and positive emotions. So what happens? Then your mind opens up to the inner source inner source of the gratitude. That is another meaning of the Mangala Charan. So our master always says that you have to start the journey with the Mangala Charan. Auspiciousness plus behavior. My attitude coming out of that, seeking the auspiciousness in a particular situation. Mm. 
there is a one secret behind it. I give my 100% in every session. I teach a lot of people in a private lesson and group sessions. I My focus is on that how to give 200% in a session. I don't care about the results. Because when I give my 200%, I'm happy inside. Out of that calmness and the happiness, I teach people. So one day it has to have an impact. I don't care and I don't expect the result one, from the day one. So when you start talking with the humility to your daughters, you don't expect the result on a one day. If you expect the result, you'll be frustrated. If you expect the result from the people who hate you from the day one, it will not happen. It will happen when you, when your attitude inside completely change. You are not affected by those people who react to you. That is what the Mangala Charan is. That is what the Mangala Charan is. So we have in our uh, tradition, we say Namaste. So that is also an attitude of Mangala Charan. But mentally we can do emotionally. Namaste means I am you, you are me. Where it means I am you and you are me means what? So if I am you, you are me, I should never harm you in any way. I should not speak out of frustration, reaction, anxiety, jealousy, and hatred. That is why I am you and you are me. How can I criticize myself? How can I react to myself? We need to change. We need to change. So that is one another way to express uh, this word Mangala Charan. So I express my behavior, my attitude coming from the clarity inside. So this process is known as the emotional acclimatization. Your, your emotions, you look at someone, you had a past memory of reaction, and now you consciously, emotionally acclimatize, internally first. You say to yourself first, I will change my emotions. I will think good of this guy. Why? I'm purifying my mind. That is why. Whether the other person is good or bad, it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. I have to change. Mind why you have a feeling of reaction and anger, dissatisfaction against someone outside. Only that creates a strong foundation to bring about a transformation in your life. Otherwise, today is the same day with reaction, dissatisfaction. Yesterday was the same day. Day before yesterday, it is the same. The entire week passed on the same way the previous month, and we have been doing the same thing days after days, weeks after weeks, months after months, years after years, without any calmness and peace. We have been doing the same thing, and there is no peace. So there the master, our master says, no, use this Mangala Charan. It takes your mind deeper within. It helps you to reach to that state. It brings about a change in your attitude. It creates a sacred atmosphere, conducive not only to my relations, but to my people everywhere. So this is the power of Mangala Charan.